On today's episode of Invigorate Your Business with George Strombolis, I sit down with an international music pop star by the name of Evagelia. She is absolutely killing it. And if you search up her name on Spotify, you will see tens of millions of downloads for her music. She keeps pumping out hit after hit after hit. She's an incredible performer and I got the chance to see her a few weeks ago and just put on a crazy show for thousands of people. She also performed in front of a sold out Barclays Center crowd in Brooklyn, New York. And she's just an all around good person that is doing incredible things. We're gonna talk about the business of music and what it means to be an artist in this world which I know nothing about. And we're gonna talk about just random great stuff in this episode. So enjoy it starting now. My name is George Strombolis, and I'm extremely passionate about traveling the world, meeting new people and learning about new businesses. Join me as I sit down with other entrepreneurs to learn about their journeys. This episode of Invigorate Your Business starts now. So I'm excited. I'm sitting with an international pop music star, right? Like you're just climbing, climbing, climbing. I'm familiar with you for the last couple of years, right? I would see you in the Greek communities online. You would see like clips and be like, oh, okay. Like I've never actually gone to Spotify until recently, but I'd always hear the clips. I'm like, wow, it's just gets in your head, right? Just amazing stuff. Thank you. And then you would see people that I'm familiar with in the Greek community you know, posting and you go there. But up until like last month at FDF, when we're going to jump into that is I got to see you perform live because my eight-year-old daughter wanted to go and see you. And it was just amazing. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> and, and again, I don't mean this. I, I went in there just like, cool. It's about the kids. It's about the community. But holy shit, did you put on a show? Thank you. <laughs> it was like, and again, I was on the sidelines, mm-hmm. my daughter's front row, like screaming her head off. And uh, you're just like, the way you just commanded the stage, right? There were people in the back and then you're going in the back and the songs, it was just such a good vibe. Thank you. And I think you overshadowed the mainliner and we won't name who, but it was just like, it was awesome, right? Uh, So that was really cool. Talk to me in general, just we'll jump in FDF, right? Like what what does that mean just from a, you know, cultural, everyone coming together and then being there? Uh, FDF was so cool for me. I, I grew up in a Greek community in New Jersey super involved, um, you know, was in Goya in my church, St. George Piscataway. Um, and also a part of the Penn Cretan Association. My dad was heavily involved, cultural chairperson, bringing over tons of, uh, musicians, plays, dancers, all sorts of things. They'd come through, stay at my house. No way. Um, so I grew up very, very involved. I grew up Greek dancing, especially Cretan dancing, um, at my Silova. Uh, since I was four years old. And for me, Greek dancing was always something that came naturally in a way. It was just like, it always felt like something I was meant to do and something I loved doing, always enjoyed doing and always would look forward to all my summers in Crete, um, going to the Panigiria, the Gledia, those parties and just dancing the entire time. Right. Like no sitting, like best exercise ever. Until and sunrise. Until sunrise. Yeah. And my yaya was always so proud of that. And she'd always be like, oh, you know, and I'd be like, yeah, 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 I did. I dedicated that dance to you. Like we had like just such a great, I had this, grew up with such a strong love for my Greek heritage and my culture and the dances. And I never got to experience something like FDF though. And everybody told me like, you have no idea what you're about to get yourself into. Like FDF is insane. But wait, even growing up in New Jersey, you never participated in FDF? No. No, okay. No, it wasn't. um, I also think you mentioned your daughter played soccer. I, by the time I got to high school, soccer really was like, I had to take up all my time. So then I was no longer dancing in the dance group. I was just dancing in my life (laughs) all the time, you know? Um, so by the time I think my, my church or my Silugo had gone to FDF, um, I was, I was no longer like deeply involved, but I heard about it. I think they like got an award that year that they went, we were pretty good. Um, (laughs) but it was also mainly like a West coast, Midwest kind of thing. And, um, it just wasn't something that 
I have something I heard about, knew about, thought was cool, but never got the opportunity to be involved in. Right. So then when this opportunity came up, um, and I was like, oh, a Greek dance festival with like Greek American youth that love Greek dancing as much as I do, this is gonna be so much fun. And compete. And compete, yeah, yeah. and like they're all there, and they told me, they're like, they're gonna be dancing up till 5 a.m., the musicians are gonna be playing in the lobbies, and I was like, whoa. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and because I experienced something similar to like the Cretan conventions, and we would dance all through the night, but this was on a whole other yeah. level, because the the lobby at like 5 a.m., you got one side, the musicians playing like stuff from Thraggy and the other side, they're playing Kritika and like in the middle, they're playing something else with right. Clarina and everybody's dancing and having a good time and it's just so passionate. Insane, yeah. It was insane. It was insane. I, I grew up in Canada. It was insane. Right, no, but then I'm 42 and when I would see guys my age dancing and they knew 18 different dances when I grew up, like it was embarrassing to go do it. I still did it because I had to do it. Yeah. But like kind of envious now where I'm like, man, they know all it's these so dances. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. And, they, and now it's like, it's cool. Yeah. And I, and I love that. I love totally. embracing that and making cool. Because I mean, to be honest, I remember when I, I danced at my church festival and I had American friends come. This was when I was younger though. And I was a little bit like, ooh, I don't know what they're going to think about these crazy outfits oh, yeah. and this music that we're going to wear. And you know, it's not something like when you're growing up and, you know, you're worrying about what other people think, especially totally. in like middle school, you can be like embarrassed just because it's something different. But I think with FDF, what's really cool is it makes it really cool to love your culture and to show it off. Absolutely. Um, and I think anybody who's not Greek who would show up there, they'd be like, this is Awesome. Party. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. And then for the non greek we have a lot of non greek listeners. FDF is Folk Dance Festival. Yes. Every year, 4,000 people were there this year. Yeah. Like, that's a lot. It Anaheim was Marriott was taken over. Yeah. So then the night of the concert, yes. um, I got to perform this Saturday night. And, you know, it's like no joke. Like, they're the screens. They have the cameraman. I was Amazing like, oh, I get to play with a cameraman oh, here. Yeah. This is fun. So you saw, I was, I was, no, like, was like, looking into the camera. <laughs> yes. like. You know, going down the, I, I saw that they, they split the, they split the room with 21 and up and then under 21 yeah. and they split it with two table, two like long tables, which created this wide, uh, not wide, but a hallway for me to walk through. To so do I, side shimmy, so right? I saw that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going down there. Cause I love to go into the crowd yes. whenever possible. So going down there and I got to high five. Your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> was that premeditated? Like, did you know before the show that I'm going to do this or what did it I just always, I always love, um, I kind of scope stuff out before to see like, okay, if I didn't want to go into the crowd, um, how can it, how can it happen? It's something yeah. that I love to do. And it's always like unexpected when it happens and you kind of create this moment and this energy with the people. Right. I love to get more connected. Um, but it was a big stage. So I was like, ah, and, and everybody was, um, you know, they had barriers. Yes. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I can go into the crowd. But then I saw that and like I asked production, I was like, can I go through that? Can I just walk down and go through that? And they said, yeah. And so it's so funny in some of the videos, <laughs> the one I post, you, you see like the security walking behind yes. me and like making sure oh, yeah. things are, it was wild. Yeah, it was it, so much fun. It was so cool. Like I know after that, the next day, everyone was talking about just the energy, the performance. And it's just cool to see. So Let's take a step back, right? You are a Sony, Sony Germany recording artist, right? Sony Germany and now um, most recently Epic Records in the US. Yeah. Are you serious? serious. Congratulations. Thank you. That, those Thank are you. like the names, right? They're yeah. huge names. Crazy. So this is a business podcast. We're going to talk culture, but how does that even happen? Let, let's rewind it back yeah. to New Jersey. I know you've said your story countless times on different podcasts and that, but like for our listeners, yeah. give us a background. Like how did you go from birth to here? You know? Uh, in how much time? No, just Let's fast forward <laughs> to like 10 years old onwards. <laughs> um, so I was born, no. Um, but we do actually have to start from birth. I was born in, in New Jersey. My dad's from Crete. My mom's Italian American. Um, and my dad came over from Crete in his thirties. So he's like very Cretan and like Greek. Off like, the boat. yeah, off the boat. So I'm, I'm first generation. Yep. And, um, basically I was born in Jersey and one month later I went to Crete and met my family. And, uh, that was, and, and I also got baptized on a monastery in Crete. So 
I always joke around, people are like, oh, were you born in Greece? I was like, not born, but I was baptized on a monastery on the mountains of Crete. So yeah. that's pretty, uh, that's that. pretty legit. Yep. Um, and basically every summer for the rest of my life, like three to four months, like not just like, you know, four weeks, like I would miss the last days of school, miss the first days of school and like be in Greece. Um, with my family and with my yaya on the farm. Amazing. Um, my yaya had a farm, like olive oil, you know, olive groves, sheep, uh, chickens, like everything. So I just kind of learned the simple life and simple way of living. And we had Palojora, a really amazing, beautiful beach town, 10 minutes away. So I'd go to the beach and just hang out with my friends all night and it was it's just it's the best epic. Times, like yeah. other kids like american kids go to camp like yeah. i went to camp kriti you know the best times <laughs> the lessons like you just appreciate stuff it was amazing and so for me it was my greek was my first language yeah i learned greek first and then english kind of came simultaneously as i went to preschool and everything just kind of you know when you're a kid you're a sponge yeah. it's so um how does that work sorry how does that work having so an italian american mother mm -hmm. catholic stubborn greek by default father yeah, right like he does <laughs> how do you go to greece for those months and then the language so, well my mom my mom was not catholic um they grew up i don't even know they, they weren't the most religious so that was pretty easy for yeah. her she she converted to greek orthodox she okay. was like my real life my big fat greek wedding perfect she converted to greek orthodox she learned greek she learned the languages like my mom speaks better greek than some greek americans wow. that i know like she can carry a conversation um she can read and and write up to a certain extent as well so my mom was very 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 supportive of the culture the the sad thing about my italian side um this is a bit of a side note but it was my great-grandfather that came here so by the time oh, it got sense. to my mom the italian language was lost and it wasn't as strong of a sure. you know cultural grab whereas with my dad it was like he was from greece <laughs> whole family still in greece you yeah. know and so for me to get in touch with my italian side i took italian in middle school and i always feel like you know an attachment to my italian side too but i have to like dig deeper for it Absolutely. to find it um but yeah so and like we said before my dad was involved in the pancretan association or involved in the church community and everything so i was just always surrounded by um a love for my culture and keeping it alive and i was always like the greek girl my friends would come over like we didn't have normal snacks right. we'd have bread and olive oil like that's right, what we right. had at, our, at my house you right. know what, what was the makeup of your friends were it just white american kids were there uh, it was pretty diverse i had italian friends puerto rican um yeah, a lot of Italian Americans because New Jersey. There's New a Jersey, lot of Italian yeah. Americans. Bridgewater. Um, Bridgewater, oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it was definitely definitely a mix. Asian, Indian. That was what was awesome yeah. about. Like people in Greece often ask me, like, oh, what was it like? I was like, I love growing up in a diverse community. Absolutely. Like I was a Greek girl, but like the girl next to me was a Sicilian girl, and the other girl next to me was you know, from Bangladesh and it's just like it's magical and we're all just sharing our culture and appreciating it. Very, I'm all about that. Yep. So then fast forward, I, soccer was always my, my love. I did love music. I loved watching like American Idol okay. with my dad and like guessing who would win. Like we predicted Carrie Underwood oh, <laughs> we're really? win, like, oh, when watch her, like that girl's <laughs> got it. Like it was just such a funny thing. And I would always like imagine like, oh, I wonder what Simon Cowell would think if I like, you know, went up there and sang. Were you singing at that time when you were watching? Or I was, was it... singing. I was singing, but I was singing more like performing with my friends in middle school. And like, I think fifth grade, I made like a girl band called like Heart's Desire. And I would write the songs and we'd make choreography with like two of my friends. No I think way. we took like, I think we took like band cover photos on, on like Polaroids. I need to find these. That's um, amazing. So it was always like, you know, I grew up on the Spice Girls, Britney Spears, like these pop icon yep and i you know i was britney spears for halloween one year like with her little microphone and pre-emotional breakdown right yeah, like pre-emotional yeah, pre yeah. breakdown god bless yeah um and yeah it was just something i always always dreamed about and always like fantasized about sure. and um while soccer i'll show was you dominant. guys while soccer while soccer was dominant yeah i played like travel soccer my dad was my coach i would practice in the backyard that's awesome. Every day, like, you know, the headers, the juggling, like the, the strategy, like right. e everything was super, super deep. 
Um, and then fast forward into high school. At that point, I'm not really as vocal anymore on how much I'd like to sing. It was more of like a private experience for me. Like I discovered this artist, Ingrid Michaelson on YouTube. And a lot of her music at the time was just so simple, like just on a ukulele or just on a guitar. And it felt accessible for me. And I was like, ah, I love this. I love this singer songwriter thing. I really like want to do this. Um, but again, soccer was still the main focus. Sure. And then I tore my ACL, which was in high school. In high school. I was 16. Oh no. Yeah. I was, Pre-torn ACL. What were your aspirations for soccer? Like U.S. women's soccer team? Like what were you? They weren't that high, but they were like college yep. at some, at some level, you know, to play, to play in college okay, yep. and do some sort of scholarship or something. And, uh, yeah, because I was playing in like pretty high level travel teams in, in high school. That's awesome. Um, and it was like my life. Like I was the soccer player, Greek yeah. soccer player girl, you know? And it's and, not easy. Like it's a cutthroat. It's oh, a, yeah, it's yeah. intense. Yes. It's, in this country, women's soccer is super intense. Yes. That's why I would always go to Greece and I'm the only girl that would play. But I think part of what made me tough when I would come back and play in the U.S., is that I played with all those boys in Greece like, barefoot, on gravel. barefoot, <laughs> yeah. barefoot on gravel. Yeah, and they were like, oh my God, like you play or like, I'd like head the ball and they'd be like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, you guys, like, just cause I'm a girl doesn't mean like, I, like I'm fine. Yeah. You can pass me the ball or That's the best amazing. was like when I'd like trap it, like on my chest up here yeah. and they're like, oh, I'm like, you guys, there's a difference. Here. It's here. Okay. Yes. Like it was oh just God. so funny. Like anything I would do that was like, pretty normal they'd yeah. be like oh <laughs> like, are you okay the poor delicate flower yeah, yeah exactly you know but then they realized they were like oh i want her on my team right. <laughs> um so that was always a lot of fun i also kind of always loved that like right. i love the idea of like proving you know the boys wrong of just like yeah Absolutely. anything boys can do girls can do better like that was just kind of always my my vibe um, that didn't mean much to me pre having three daughters yeah, yeah, and no, I know yeah. that sounds chauvinist. I don't mean it to yeah, be. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, okay. I mean, it's equality. And then I had daughters. I'm like, oh no, it's not. Yeah. Right. You just see things differently you now. You see things like, differently. Yeah, you absolutely. see things differently, and you want her to go out there and like, if it's a whole group of boys, to be like, yeah, I'm gonna play. Go. Don't cry. Just yeah, let's do this. Just play. Absolutely. Because then they, then they, you just, then they just realize that you're actually just a human, and you all can play soccer together. Like, it's sure. not that big of a deal. Absolutely. You know? But yeah, how do we... Uh, so you tore your ACL. So, yes, I tore my ACL. I was absolutely devastated. Jeez. I was devastated. Was that... It's like, if you're a professional athlete, you tear your ACL, it's a year plus recovery yeah. and your career it is pretty like, much done. Yeah, it was like... And I had just joined this new team that I was so excited about. And it was rough. Yeah. It was really, really rough. And uh, a lot of tears. Um... And I, I got the surgery and I was kind of stuck at home, but that's also when I like found some time to like learn ukulele and learn guitar off of YouTube. And I started exploring and like kind of writing a little bit on my own. And again, it was kind of more like, I don't want to say totally secret, like my close friends knew I really liked to sing, but it wasn't really like a known thing. Right. Um, Were you performing for your friends? Like, would they hear? Sometimes. Okay. But honestly, not really. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, like I even remember it was like something I really wanted to do. I remember for eighth grade, I wanted to audition for the talent show and I signed up to audition and I was about to walk into the audition and then I walked out because I was too nervous and too scared oh to like do it publicly. So fast forward, I'm at a party in high school. It's a senior year. And, um, my friend pulls out her guitar and we're like sitting around a fire and she's like, she's playing and I start singing along and she was like, you're good. <laughs> Where did this come from? Yeah, right? like, yeah. Wait a second. Do you want to start a band? I was like, I would love nothing <laughs> more than to start a band. <laughs> she didn't finish her sentence. Yeah, you were just, just like, like, let's do it. So we started a band come and, on. um, started writing music. And, um, what was the name of it the band? Was me. The band was Jarrett's coastline because our friend Jarrett was there when we were trying to figure out the name and we opened a, um, we were looking through the dictionary. So we thought it would be cool to like find a cool word. And we liked coastline and we're like, I like that. It's better Jarrett's than hairline. Coastline. Yeah. So we were Jarrett's coastline, pretty random, but cool. it was her on guitar, me singing and another friend on cello. And we auditioned for battle of the bands and I, um, I tanked. 
No I like way. got nervous and I sang off key and we didn't make it. And I was so upset and I remember crying that day because we were ready. Like we wrote the song, like everything was great, but I just got, I don't know what happened to me mentally sure. that day. And then we were like, you know what? We didn't work this hard for nothing. We wrote all these songs. So we invited all our friends to my friend's house and we got a PA system and we had our own concert. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> and we had our own concert and that was kind of how, and uh, we had our own concert and I felt like, okay, I got to redeem myself. And I was walking through the high school and I saw this poster and it said, can you sing in a different language? Do you want to be part of the, or do a talent or show something for your culture? Do you want to do the cultural diversity show? And I was like, well, I actually just learned this song. Um, what song was it? Manos Loizos to Cordeon. And I had just learned it to perform it for Goya. Oh, wow. Actually, for okay. a church youth group. And I was like, actually, I do know how to play a song and sing it in Greek. I'm going to audition for this. And I auditioned. And then I performed in front of the entire student body. So like all 600 like seniors, juniors. In Greek. In Greek. And it was just me. I remember I was like a little nerd, like the, the mic wasn't like, it was just kind of this like very, like if it was in a movie, it would be this like awkward, like coming of age thing, you know, and I'm waiting and like the girls being like, ugh, I don't know if it's going to be good. You know what I mean? Like this, right, right, that right. was like the whole vibe. But then I, it was set up. It was just a spotlight. And then I sang this song in Greek and it was dead silent while I was performing. And at the end, you know, you got like the marry me like Go kind of it. things. And I was like, it was my first time really feeling Maybe second, because when we did that show, it was, right. I was just like, this is special. And this felt really good. And I really liked doing this. And then I continued through. And that was like senior year high school? Senior year high school. Okay. And wow. so like, yeah, like singing in Greek and performing for a full American audience was the first time I felt truly myself in well, a way. Why though? Like, that's interesting. Is it? So you're Greek. When you speak Greek, I'm like, oh, she's off the boat. She's like, yeah, yeah. your Greek is can't be better, right? Accent, pronunciation, everything. Was it like a safe zone for you? Like it may be. I think it was a safe zone and something like nobody else was doing. Right. You know, and it was just like it's your niche. It was my and it was just this like I knew that song inside and now I was like ready to do it. And it just felt right and it just felt good. And then fast forward through college, I went, I studied um at Rutgers University. Yep. I have my undergrad in political science and my master's is in elementary special education. Oh, I'm sorry. Look so, at you. That's yeah. So yeah. I got, um, educated. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad, as my dad, educated. And yeah. my dad would say like, Evangelia, like music is great, but it's a hobby. Yep. Get a job that you like. And I was, if I wasn't doing music, teaching is my other passion. Teaching. Yes. So studied that. But while I was now at Rutgers, I was, I was now like, I liked performing. I had done it and now I wanted to keep doing it. So I was doing open mic nights. I was writing songs. I had my first like falling in love heartbreak stuff. So I had tons to write about. No way. And um, then I started organizing and hosting my own events. All in like Jersey, New York All area? All in Jersey. Yeah. Especially at Rutgers. I yep. had started this other band that I was in. So I was just super involved. Like, everybody thought I was in the music school because I was doing so much music your... outwardly. Like that was my thing and what I wanted. Um, and then I started going into, then I got my job working in New Jersey and music was still super strong of the desire for me. And I, and I felt this, I've always felt, it. I was like, I have this thing in me. Like if I just like, I don't know, like if I just keep doing it, maybe something will happen. Right. And so I was teaching by day and by night, I was running around New York city to every studio performance, networking, you name it. I was doing it. So your early 20s, you're officially working now as a teacher. Yeah. And what grade were you? Um, I started in fifth uh, in kindergarten. I did six months of that because I, I took over uh, like a maternity leave position, yeah. a woman who was out for to have her baby. And then the next day I went from kindergarten to sixth grade. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was crazy. But that's like, exhausting, guys... right? Like oh, all yeah. day and then rushing into yeah. the city. God and bless to... teachers. Oh, uh, was, absolutely. It was um, a lot. And yeah, so then... So every hour that I wasn't teaching or that I didn't need to dedicate to that line of work that I was sure. doing, I was dedicating to music. And I remember at my first year I lived at home to save up money and my dad was home and he was like, 
what are you doing <laughs> running around New York? Blah, blah, blah. What's your principal going to yeah. say? And I was like, dad, don't worry. I've, I've got glowing reviews. Like I'm, I'm doing this. Like, trust me. I was like grading papers on the subway. Like I was just doing everything that I possibly could. Um, because that's, that was my passion. That's yeah. what I wanted to do. And then three years into it, there's budget cuts in, in New Jersey and my school district has to cut like 30 teachers. So I still wasn't tenured yet. I was one of the younger ones. So we were the first to go. Last in, first out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I lost my job. And it was one of those things where it was like so scary to hear. Um, but then all the teachers that knew, you know, what I was doing. So at that point, I started soft releasing some music online. Okay. And, um, what year are we talking now? 2018. 20, okay, so I forget, you're so young. So 2018, this happens, you're releasing music, you're testing the market just yeah, to see. Yeah, testing, and things are kind of like starting to bubble and starting to happen for me. And I, was, I wasn't incorporating, yeah, so okay. I wasn't incorporating Greek elements yet. I was just more singer-songwriter stuff. And I went and um, my co-teacher, who actually was my sixth grade teacher, once upon a time. And then fast forward, we, we no talked together, which was so cool, but she would always cover for me when I'd have like to skip school or something, for something important. She'd be like, I got you. Don't worry. Go do your thing. Cause when I first showed her my music, she was like, my love, I love teaching with you, but you're not going to be teaching for very long. Like she called it. She saw that she called it. And so then when I was laid off, she was like, it was like, now's your time to fly. Blessing. Yeah. Like go. And so that's what I did. And I decided to take it as a sign from the universe and an opportunity to not like, I would never, I don't think I would have had the gusto to like quit Yes. to leave the safety net. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it kind of gave me an out. Um, and I just didn't look for a new, for a new job. And that's I told incredible. my dad, I was like, you know, and by that point, my dad realized that like, okay, She's got a thing going because he came to one of the shows and, and he, he and he saw and he told me after it was funny because it was a show deep, deep in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, geez. OK. Like, be so, bed -stuy deep? Yeah, like, oh, okay. like bed -stuy deep. And I was so excited because I finally I like booked this show. I like got a band and like this promoter reached out and I didn't know what I was doing. And um, it was so deep in Brooklyn, like scary deep. And mm -hmm. the and and there were skulls everywhere. It was like this dive Jeez. bar. The stage was like the size of this box. Like it was yeah. embarrassing. I was like, oh my God. And my dad's here. Like my dad was fuming. He was like, where is my we, daughter yeah. performing? Like, what is she doing with her life? Um, but then we performed and we're like for, you know, everybody before was like talking over everybody. Like my dad didn't want that for me. But then there was something magical happened. And he felt it and that space was like transformed. And he came up to me after the space with all the schools yeah. and bedtime. Yeah. And he was like, Evangelia, like that was amazing. And you deserve to be on bigger and better stages. Oh man, as a father, that like Yeah. That it was hits. like which was crazy for me. Oh my God. Because, you know, I was always kind of fighting you know, it was never mad like it was never like intense fighting, but just kind of like comments of like your work hello, like, what are you doing? Don't oh, yeah. get too, like, don't go crazy over here. Um, but he saw, and um, from that day, he became, like, on supportive board. and on board. I mean, my mom was always like, follow your dreams. Yes. And I was like, more like American. Like, you need the yin to the yeah, yang, right? Like, yeah, they're definitely <laughs> opposites. Um, but then he became very, very supportive. And when this happened, I told him what I wanted to do. And at that point, he's like, well, you know, give it a chance for a year. You could always go back. You have your master's. You have great reviews. It's not like you were bad, you know? And, and that's all he wanted as a father, like get your education, have something to fall back on. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Isn't that crazy though? How, if you didn't tear your ACL, yeah. right. You would have got some scholarship. You would have gone somewhere. And if you went there, probably every spare moment would have been I with your team. Been and the, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And then you get laid off. Yeah. Right. Budget cuts. And yeah. then you're actually able to pursue this. Exactly. So that's how you get up to here and then it, it works. You're doing the shows. Like how do you go from there and then actually being signed yeah. by Sony Germany and now Epic Records. Epic Record. So that all happens and now it's like June, July, August. It's like the summertime and I'm just full force. Whatever I couldn't do in those hours that I was teaching, now I'm like just doing even more. Like right. I am out and about and networking, performing everything I possibly can, writing. Um, and a friend invites me to this show. He's like, my friend Stolar has a, is doing a concert and he wants a New York 
singers to be like planted into the audience to surprise the audience and sing along to this one chorus and make it a moment. Are you free tonight? I was like, actually, and this was the one night I happened to be free, okay. which is rare. <laughs> right. But I was like, yeah, I am free. And they sent me the song. I like learned the chorus and it was like this piano ballad. So I thought, um, I thought this guy just sang like piano ballads, but turns out that was just the piano ballad moment of the song. Okay. And then I walk in and it's this guy, he's like playing bass and he's singing like super soulfully. The band is amazing. Um, and that's Jay Stolar, who's now the love of my life and my creative partner. Jeez. And so we meet that night and uh, I remember asking my friend who brought me there, I was like, can you introduce us? Like, I want to, he was also, you know, known to be a really great songwriter and like known in the industry. I'd heard his name around. It's like, I'd love to meet him. And, uh, he was like, I'm sure he'll introduce himself <laughs> to you. And so we, we met and we, you know, there was definitely chemistry and, you knew and that everything. Night, like, and hey. I was like, ah, cause I was like, no, I really like him. But like, also there's business potentially like yes. it was just messy or could be messy. Yep. But we decided like, let's explore this. And we avoided working together at first, but then it was just like, of course we're going to work together. Like it just was, there was no way not to, we're yes. like, this will make or break us, but we can't not try. And so we tried and I told him I had the idea of incorporating Greek elements into my music, but any other producer or anybody else I'd ever brought it up to was like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> or like, I don't think that's a good idea. Or like they weren't the right person for it. What was his reaction to that? His reaction was like, yes, 1000%. He's like, you are always speaking Greek. You're Greek dancing. You're showing me this music. Like it's a huge part of who you are. Right. It's not all of who you are, but it's a very, very big and important part of your life. Like us Greek Americans, honestly, being Greek is kind of part of our identity. Like yeah. it's like our personality. We're just like, no, we're always thinking about Greece and like, I, I was the girl who like wouldn't swim in the Jersey shore because I was like, I can't <laughs> yeah, see my feet. Exactly. I can only do the Mediterranean exactly. sea. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and the locals are like enough already. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I'm just like, no, you don't understand. You don't. <laughs> like, I can't. <laughs> um, so he was just like, this is what we should do and like hone in and zero in on it because that's also what's going to like, now I was at a point where it wasn't just fun and games anymore. Wow. I needed to find a way of how to be, make amazing music. That's, both true to me and also can make me stand out. Yes. Like literally thinking from a marketing perspective, like there's so many people trying to do this, right? And so- And was there a fourth, so you did three. The fourth one is to make this a business, right? Isn't that like the yeah, ultimate- to make it a bit like yeah. you gotta like live off. Gotta pay bills, you know, right? gotta pay bills. Yeah. So my dad, uh, my, I don't know why I brought my dad up, but he loved that idea, obviously. When, yes. <laughs> when we said, when I told him the Greek stuff. Um, but we like really zeroed in and we went into the studio and I made a whole Google doc of like music that was inspiring to me. I showed Greek dances. I showed to to Jay, Jay yeah. and to other people that we would bring in to work on, on it with us. Like we bring in other songwriters and other producers and we'd bring them into our world. And we kind of wrote this, like everything that we would make would have to be inspired from something on okay. this, on this document. And that's how we got um, Pame Pame, which was my first first release. Was that your first release? That was my first release. And uh, Diving were the first two singles that we felt, because there were a lot of songs, but yes. those were the two that finally, because you have to write a lot to get to like what you're actually ready and want to release. And so we had those two um, songs that we felt were a great example of who I am right. now and what the identity that I want to put forth into the world. Um, and Jay works closely with Aloe Black. If you're familiar with him, he sings, he sings, um, like wake me up when it's all over. Oh shoot. Yeah. yeah that's you know I mean? uh, yeah. Iconic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and he, so that was a song that he sang with Avicii. So he was very connected in like Europe and everything. And we kind of told him our ideas and he was like, you need to sign with a label in Europe and go to Germany. <laughs> like they have money honestly, you know, yep. like they can, like, they can do this. Um, and don't go then, to Greece, <laughs> don't go to Greece yes. first, but right. go to Germany to be in Europe and then also pay attention and nurture Greece because they're going to understand this. Yes. Um, and grow there, grow in Europe, simultaneously do stuff in the U S but like, you know, the goal is international stardom, but like 
if we're talking, this is a business podcast, right? So the, yeah. the, the thing was like, okay, let's like grow the apples in our own orchard. And then great advice. Were you, know? you for it when he came up with it that? It was scary for me, but yes. it was like, uh, it made sense. Yeah. And we, uh, we got connected to the CEO of Sony Germany, Patrick Jeez. Mushatsi Kareba, who's this amazing, amazing man. And he heard the, he I had nothing going on, nothing besides these two demos that we had to, you know, to show for me, the fact that Jay was, had a history and is, you know, great. Yep. And we were recommended from Aloe Black, but I had no social media, like nothing. Um, but you have a great personality, right? Like getting in the room. Yeah. So let me ask you, how do you even go about, do you physically go to Germany and meet with him? Like, how does that so process? He, no, he just heard that he heard the demos and then he was just like, I want to sign this off the music. 2020? 2020 yeah it was like 2019 the conversation started and then 2020 february 2020 i fly to berlin to sign my record deal february 2020 end of february 2020 looking for you up like and then 20 march end of february 2020 like people were still not doing the mask oh, thing on. and we came uh and we came back and we had all these plans for me to go to europe to do like a, a radio tour for Pam and Pam and yeah. like all this stuff and obviously the world shut down that's so insane. I released, luckily, this was a crazy person in me. <laughs> we really believed in this music, right? And we knew that like, somebody's going to bite. Like, we're going to make this happen. Like, we were super determined to the point where I took out a credit card and I funded and produced and shot a whole music video. The Bame Bam music video, I shot it in my hometown Beautiful. in Crete, in my uh, Yaya's farmhouse. And I invited the whole village and we threw a little mini panihiri and we, we made this thing because we knew that the visual would also help us, help our case to Absolutely. explain like, and I wanted that to be my first visual. So you see, this is where I'm from and this is why my music sounds like this. And um, Patrick loved that too. And, you know, we were able to pay off that credit card. <laughs> That's amazing. That's <laughs> and amazing. So, you know, and so we did that. And so I'm with Sony, Sony Germany and then Panic Records represents Sony and the uh, the in the greek region so they were kind of representing me essentially in greece yeah. and then you know things are moving and uh and lenny fureira here's my song fotia which came out in english first and she was like i want to do this in greek with you and i was like oh my god let's do it in greek <laughs> top five known artists in greece yeah, right out of cyprus yeah, yeah, yeah she's, she's huge she's huge and she yeah. got second place in eurovision so she's also like people call her queen of europe yes so, uh, she reached out to you. Yeah. So how does that even, she calls, she texts, like what does she was, do? Uh, I was in Greece for a music video for my song Onira. So this was like, Fotia came out in like October. This is fast forward July, um, July, whatever that year was 2021. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. 20, yeah. July 21 must have been 21. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it was the point where I could finally travel to Greece. Yep. Um, so it was 21 and she came to the meeting cause she signed to panic records as well. Cause we wanted to shoot, I wanted to shoot this music video in Greece. So we reached out to panic for help in producing it. And she came in and walked in and was just like, oh. and I was like, huh? what? Like, you know, my song, I'm a big fan of hers for year. like every, my summer memories are attached to an Eleni Ferreira song. So she sat down, she said such amazing things to me. She's like, I love your sound. I love what you're doing. I think you should go to Eurovision one day. Like I heard Fotiaz. I was like, it just came on her playlist while she was like cooking or something in COVID. She's like, who is this girl? And what is this song? Like, I want this song. No way. <laughs> and then we did a duet in Greek and in Spanish. So that must have been surreal for you. It was crazy. And that changed a lot for me. Um, we got to perform it on tv in greece and like premiering on like the mad walk Jeez. um it got to be like number one on the radio and it was like been in the top 10 for like months it still is on rotation yes. and playing so it's an amazing song thank you it, it, like thank honestly you. it's i'm telling you i i've my daughters have forced me in the beginning i'm like all right let's listen to a couple and then it was just it sticks and every morning on the way to school or to soccer or to whatever it's like 
our playlist is let's go at my let's go at my yeah, yeah. Uh, like my two year old sings that song <laughs> right go. it's just it's awesome and then once that Thank beat you. drops like we love it like so it's replaced fun. Shakira's Waka Waka because that's been which on is repeat wild. which is wild right <laughs> big Shakira fan so yeah, right so <laughs> sorry Shakira sorry Shakira we love you she's on next week so we're okay. right. yeah. uh, well let me ask you so that's a career highlight you're you're blowing up in Greece and then. Talk to me just while we're on this. We're going to yeah, get back yeah. to the business side. Yeah. Argyros. Yeah. Right. You start performing with him and Saki in Greece. Yeah. Right. And then let's talk from there to Barclay Center. Yeah. Epic yeah. show. Yeah. So I got asked to open for Argyros and, and Saki Rupa at the residence for, to have a residency in Athens, yes. which was not something I ever like thought about or that I'd want. I never really had that in my head to do that. Right. Um, I know a lot of the artists in Greece do it, but um, then I was asked and we saw who the artists are. And I was like, well, I might consider doing it for this because I had to move my life to Greece for yes. four months. Is that what it is? A residency is like four months there? Uh, five, six, seven. It can be... Like the winter months they usually... It's yeah. the winter months. So we, you know, weighed out the pros and cons and everything. And it was just like, all right, I'm moving to Greece for the next few months. Come on. Um, and so... It was really, really cool and very fun and an amazing experience as a performer to get the opportunity to perform for 2,000 people every Friday and Saturday night. Like, you don't really get that opportunity deal, here yeah. in the U.S. as a developing artist at my level, you know? And so I got to do that, and I saw it as kind of like my boot camp training for, like, my own touring and everything. Totally. And so I was, like, getting ready to do my own tour in the spring, so then I felt ready, you know, to, like, come out and perform. And, um, you know, we developed that relationship and then Argyros announced that he was coming to the U.S. Huge tour. I'm the Greek American girl. <laughs> I'm already here. So it just kind of was a, it just was a good fit, I think, for them. And I was super honored and grateful to have been asked to come along for that ride. So they asked you like after that. Yeah. So let me ask you before we talk Barclays, you did a five month residency. The first time you performed on your first Friday night yeah. in front of these Greeks, flowers coming at you, all this yeah. stuff to your last performance in that five month residency. Big difference. Like were you learning every Friday, Saturday? And yes. And just trying yeah. and Yeah, it was a big difference. Okay. Big difference from the first time. That time I was nervous, the first the first one, because it's not like a regular concert. It's a club. Yes. And you have their tables and they're there with their barea and their friends. It's it's still a show and a performance, but it's just a different experience. So you have to like, I saw it as a challenge every day to like make eye contact with as many people as I could to like bring them in and like keep them with me. Who weren't like this on their phones? Who weren't on their phones or, or not like talking and waiting for their friends. Right. Like it's a, and as an opener, that's something you have to deal with. Um, that challenge, you know? So, but my performance from the beginning to the end was definitely, I felt way more confident. I just felt so good. Right. And right. I was like loving it and having so much fun. Well, that's a crash course. Like imagine- It was any, a crash course. Right? Imagine any other, con like if you went to a Justin Timberlake concert and imagine he's performing and then hundreds of flowers just get shot at his face. Like, could you, <laughs> there's nothing like Greek con So let me yeah, ask it's you- it's really you, crazy. You always see videos go viral of, some Greek performer on stage and the guys are just throwing flowers in their Pick face. In their face, yeah. Like, how was that the first time they throw them out? Is there a, I a never polite got hit, way? I luckily never got hit in the face okay. <laughs> with it. Um, but there was one time where, there's a video of this too. I can like share it with oh, you yeah. and like it after. Um, but I was wearing a, a stiletto heel. So it was like really thin. And lately what they do in Greece, I don't like this. I liked when it used to just be flowers, but now they're throwing the trays with the flowers. Right, styrofoam. The styrofoam. Uh, yeah. I just don't get it. It's, I get it like you want to show macho, like look at this big pile, but exactly. to me it looks like trash. Like I just don't yeah. like it. I like, I wish it was just flowers. Yep. But anyway, but they're throwing these, these trays and the flowers. And um, I'm also dancing on stage. So it's kind of, it's hard for me when there's a bunch of sure. stuff everywhere. But my, my heel caught into the styrofoam tray. So the styrofoam tray is now like a part of my shoe. <laughs> and I'm like doing this like turn and like I see it. But then I like grabbed it on the beat and then I threw it down. There <laughs> and then you I go. kept going and I was like. That was good. It was so fun. And the people who were like with me in that moment were like That's cracking good. up because it was just like, got it, I got hey, it. Hey, we did it. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. It's funny though. Yeah, you see up. So is there a, is there a rude way to throw them? 
like a disrespectful way? I think if you're like truly aiming for their face, like we're trying to sing here. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's like, it's like an honor and we're grateful when you throw flowers. But also, you know, don't throw them at our face. Wouldn't it be better to throw dollar bills or bills? I mean, <laughs> right. I would love that, especially like if I could keep them. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Like you're throwing flowers at then they recycle and the yeah, gypsies yeah. are reselling. I don't yeah, know. It's yeah. just a weird it, thing. It's a it's a thing. And you don't get it until you go. Totally. You have to be there. <laughs> totally. So then uh, New York City, Adiros on his own, if we talk about him for a second, like that's just a big deal to have Barclay Center as a venue. Right, yeah. thirteen thousand people is yeah. what I read. Yeah, uh, he asks you. You're from the tri-state. Yeah. So to be able to go to Barclays and MSG, like they're they're yeah. these spots. It was wild. But walk <laughs> me through that day, like yeah. the day before. We're like, just walk yeah. us through that, because that's. Yeah, like leading up to it, I remember being. Like, I can't believe I'm going to play Barclays Center. I was telling my friends and everybody, and like the day I got to announce that that I got to be a part of that tour and the types of venues we were playing it made me feel so proud to be Greek American and so proud of Adhiro. Right. Um, you know, he's a superstar, but that's a big thing. Like no Greek Huge. artist previously has played that kind of venue. Um, and especially in an, the type of city like New York City, like you're playing Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's wild. That's amazing. And I felt just really proud that it was even happening. Um, and then you know, leading up, it was just rehearsals, finding the perfect outfit, like, you know. Do you have a crew? Sure. Do you have like a stylist crew? Yeah, like I have a stylist. I have uh, friends that are designers. Um, a close friend actually from Jersey, Sammy Rosario, she made my outfit. She did? From okay. scratch. Um, she designed it. And I had my dancers who were on my tour with me. It was so cool for me because I, I got to work with my team because the only other times I've performed with um, Arguido was in Greece. So I now have like a team there, but it was like, okay, I'm, this is my home base. It's your now. camp, yeah. This yeah. is like my people are here. Yeah. And so it was really, really special. And like when we were doing um, sound check, and I was just like looking out into what was about to be filled with all these people, Insane. it was so surreal. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to sing here. And I danced Pedro <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, listen, I saw the footage. I wasn't there. <laughs> so like, fun. pretty amazing. It was so fun. How do you even calm nerves like when you're out there? Is it 2,000 or 12,000? Do you care? You know, I don't. No. I mean, it's kind of different now. Um, now that I have like a lot of performances under my belt and I've gotten to perform in stadiums before with Eleni Fureira, we've done our song. So it just kind of, in some ways, the more intimate shows are even harder because they're, everybody's there like and close to you and like you see them seeing you right when i'm on the stage at when i was on the stage at barclays there's a lot of lights so i couldn't really see couldn't really see that much to be honest and i was just like there doing my thing but when i could see right it was really epic yeah, it was epic it was epic and like i did this cover of um empire state of mind yes. and i did blended did my thing of like Blending Greek, I like rewrote some of Jay Z's verse and made it Greek. Oh, it was and awesome. I heard me. that. Yeah, it, was, it was so cool. It was so fun. And doing that in Barclay Center was probably like the highlight for me. Like singing that song is so inspiring. That's, <laughs> you know? that's like and the national to, anthem now. And to get to do it in, like my way and for that group of people was so freaking cool. It's so cool. It like was that, so cool. That's pushed <laughs> like, out the Frank so Sinatra in New York, New York. Like yeah, that's become the anthem, yeah, right? It's the so anthem. let me ask you, can you even get that on Spotify? Can you put that track or is there copyright laws? I haven't thought about it. There's probably some sort of way to do it, but I think we'd have to figure out because because I change the lyrics to Greek. Um, I think it's not a, just a cover anymore. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's badass. But you can find it on all my socials. Yeah, I have the videos. But yeah, so, so I was that, pumped about that one. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> so that's been your pinnacle. Obviously, there's going to be more in your climbing, but like to date, that's been your biggest, biggest show performance. Yeah. yeah. What was cool about it is like it wasn't just me. Like I was saying, performing one song. Like I got to do a full like a 25 to I think it was like a 30 minute set. So I got to really Jeez. like show who I am um, and to get to show who I am in a place like that yeah. was so cool. You <laughs> it was so cool. And then after when, when Arguiro went on and I was like, just, you know, backstage and just looking at the crowd and how happy I was just like, Greek America is here. Yeah. It, it's we incredible. We are here. They're filling up stadiums. It was stadiums. so amazing. It was so special. Oh, you should be so proud. Everyone's like proud to see that as well. Yeah. You know, like that, 
incredible. Uh, talk to me just about, you said your camp and your team, right? You're in an industry from the outside looking in, there's a lot of positive, but there's also dark sides to this business, right? Uh, and again, being on the outside, not knowing, I feel like there's so many sleazy people, there's opportunists, there's people trying to take advantage. Everyone thinks they know someone and they're trying to get their hands in your pocket. So now that your, your fame is increasing, right? How do you, like even having a uh, like boyfriend, right? Mm-hmm. Who's, you guys, sounds like an amazing guy and he's helping you grow and mm-hmm. you're helping each other. Mm-hmm. You have that, that's like your safe zone. Then you have your family, then you have friends, then you have other people that are just trying to make money off you. How do you, how do you navigate that? Well, if you're close circle, the people like your people, if they're, if you have a strong relationship with your people and you got that care about you, then it just makes everything easier to be honest, because it's like, Um, I feel so blessed and so lucky to get to work with my partner, um, with my boyfriend because, and it's been over five years now, like since 2018, right. That we've been like at this and growing, but on the one year, like, how do you balance also working with your, you know, and it's, it is a balance and it's, it's of course like you have to, you know, set boundaries and everything, but it's like. It's my person that cares about me more than anybody else and not just about the music and not just, they care about me as a human and what's going to be best for me. So the people that I bring close and like let in, like that come onto my management team, um, even that join my social media team or whatever, like those are like my close people that I really trust. And uh, you just kind of vet everybody. You just have to vet everybody. That's Everyone it. has an agenda. Fortunately, unfortunately, yeah. everyone has some yeah. sort of and angle. And you just kind of see like, how can we all benefit? Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Grow. At the end of the day, you know, like, that's a good way to look at um, it. Um, there's uh, it's always an exchange, but it doesn't mean it has to be bad. Absolutely. So strong business person, you're a business person when you're working a full-time teaching job and then hustling in the street, yeah. like you, you grind, right? Yeah. Uh, as a woman, as a man, if I was in the space, it's easy to have kids. If I wanted to have mm-hmm, a family, mm-hmm. have a kid, nothing changes physically. You just yeah. go as a woman, mm-hmm. early thirties, yeah. right? Like down the road, do you want kids? What's that going to look like for career? Like, I do it- want kids. Okay. I want kids. Um, what I love is that there's so many amazing pop star international women that are having kids and still being hot and awesome. Right. Look at Beyonce. Look at Rihanna. Look at Fureira. Just had her baby and she's had her best year yet. She was on the cover of Vogue pregnant. Like for me, (laughs) it's like I I have certain things I want to accomplish before having, like when I have kids, I want to be like really, really ready um, and be very established in my career where it's like, yeah, I can have kids or like when I have... (laughs) Maybe we'll go back to this interview if it happens, but I would like, like one day when I do have kids, I'm at the point where it's like, then I'm on the cover of Vogue and can do a beautiful like pregnancy shoot. That's high fashion. (laughs) Like that's my dream, you know? Amazing. Um, and to just show that like, it doesn't have to take away. Like right now I'm still, I'm super in like the building stages. Like it would be a lot to have kids and a family right now. And just not, it's just not the time, but in a few years, it can be the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, you're going to balance it, right? Yeah. And I would balance it and just, you know, I'd go and bring the kid on tour, like, or just not tour as much. Like there's, I'd have help, you know, there's, uh, there's all sorts of, absolutely all sorts of ways to, to do it right. And still be there. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Let me ask you, when you do a show like Barclays or you're doing an FDF or you're doing your tour, we're going to talk about coming up your national North American tour aside from finances, how do you measure like, uh, it was a successful event? Like, is it social media bumps? Is it streams? Like what, what metrics does your camp come back with and say, Hey, this was good or it wasn't. It's, uh, everything it's, there's so many different things. Um, it's great if there's a social media bump or more money is coming in. Money's yep. always great. Money helps you it keep helps. going. You know, money's great. There's the, yeah, there's the social media metrics. There's of course, uh, the money there's, uh, but it, sometimes it's also just about building awareness and building community. And sometimes right. it's just like what you feel. So like when I was at FDF, I loved that I got to meet so many people face to face and create like 
an opportunity for a genuine connection right. that you don't always get to have. So I don't know, like whether or not that like crazily bumped uh, like numbers, you don't really know, but it's also like you get this feeling. Right. And I think it's like a mix between numbers and the feeling, you know, like for me, when I played Barclay Center, like that feeling was enough. It's, it's a high, right? It's enough. Yeah. You know? So you didn't see the bump of 100,000 additional plays from Let's Go MIA just from me <laughs> listening? Up. Probably, oh. probably. I, mean, I, I try to like stay kind of away from the numbers. Yep. Um, because sometimes it can cloud my art and like what I'm doing. So if I'm paying too much attention sometimes to like, to the numbers. That's why I bring on like a social media team or other people who can like analyze it and can like tell me about it. But this way I can like feel good about what I'm putting out. And yeah. then I just kind of don't pay that much attention. Gotcha. I kind of like let the other people, but I, I do pay attention. I guess what I'm saying is I don't put as heavy of a weight, a weight on so it. So you don't get consumed by it, right? Exactly. Because it's very possible to get very consumed Absolutely. by numbers and then go into comparing and all of this stuff. And it can be a dark rabbit hole yes. that I have gone down in the past and I've been kind of learning different ways to navigate that to not go down that. Yeah. And there's no overnight with anything, right? Building a business, whatever. Everyone thinks like instant overnight. No, it's like, it's nope. It's very hard work. Yeah. You've been at this <laughs> very hard work. since high school, right? To get yeah, here. You're not yeah, an really. overnight sensation or whatever. No. Just because people are being aware of it, you're grinding, you're in the streets, you're meeting people. Like, yeah. it's a grind. Without getting into your financials, obviously, yeah, yeah. is the, does this support? Like, is this yeah. a job? It supports a lifestyle. Supports a lifestyle, thank God. Like the live performances, and now I also launched a jewelry line. Leah, let's Leah, talk about that. Yes, so Leah by Vangelia. These are two of the rings, Beautiful. actually. Um, we'll put everything up on the was, screen too. Yes, thank you. Um, I always looked up to artists like Rihanna. Like I brought up J Lo to like these artists that have their brands and their music, but also have other adjacent brands with their interests and, and what they like. And I love fashion. I love jewelry. I love, I love also doing things that show again, my culture. So for me, it just felt right that the first extension outside of music and creating a brand would be handmade Greek jewelry. And so the first launch, we do like limited drops. First launch was in November. We sold it out. I made a special launch for FDF. Which I saw, was cool. yes, okay. And, uh, but. So, what, yeah, in, what inspired really cool. this? You're, you're creative, right? Yeah. To be able to write hits that are getting. People don't, it's not a few thousand views. We're talking millions and millions of downloads. Like, that's your creativity with you and your team coming up with these songs. Yeah. So, you're obviously creative, and now you're getting into the jewelry side, which expresses, like, yeah. is, what made you want to do this? I, I love. For me, every summer was looking forward to Greek dancing at the Spanigiria and also going to the streets where all the jewelry, uh, handmade jewelry people right. were that just would have their like suitcase open yep. and they're sitting there making the stuff on the side. And it's all amazing yes. and beautiful. And I would always come back every summer back to the U.S. and in school wearing handmade Greek jewelry. And everybody would ask me, where is this jewelry from? Like, where did you get that? And I'd be like, oh, it's handmade by this guy in Greece. And I'm like, ah, well, I can't get that. That's not right. helpful, you know? And, um, and then when it came time with my, uh, so that was just in my regular everyday life. But then when it came time to think about my image as an artist and everything, jewelry is really important to me. And I love always wearing jewelry and it's right. a way to express myself. And if I can, and if it's going to be, if I can get it to be jewelry from Greece and rock different designers from Greece, especially if they're handmade, like that's my favorite thing. So it was always just, it was just something I was super passionate about pre-music. Um, so it just kind of made sense. Um, and I love evil eyes. I love snakes. I yeah. love being, I'm really inspired by, uh, ancient Greek art and, um, so the ring is like inspired by like, 
evil eye and a snake without being an evil eye and a snake. I got you. That yeah. makes sense. And they're they're beautiful. So do you actually Thank design you. these? You're part of that yes. whole process. Yes. And then are they made in the States or? So they're made in Greece. They're made in Greece. They're made in Greece Let's by go. this jeweler that I know very well, close friends that they've become. And in you know, Crete? In, uh, in Athens. In Athens, okay. In Athens, yeah. So we came up with a design and... Uh, one of my close friends and Jay are like my co-founders with it. So I don't do everything by myself, sure. but the design really came from me and inspired. And we talked to them and, you know, showed them what we wanted it to be. Yeah. And they brought it to life. So then uh, Leah Collections, mm -hmm. is that what it's called? Uh, website yeah. is? It's leahbyvangelia.com. Leahbyvangelia.com. Yeah. So you have to stay tuned because right now we're sold out of the first drop. So you have to stay tuned for drop 222 coming two, two, two. Some, yeah so they're all like drop one one it was drop one 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 this yes. is drop two 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 i love angel numbers okay i very much believe in like synchronicities and signs and all of that <laughs> you're a greek so woman i'm a That's greek it, woman yeah, yeah. i'm a greek woman so um yeah drop two 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 is gonna come sometime 2024 with a new design and it'll again will be a limited collection so it'll online? be available yeah it'll okay. be available online but i'm gonna make a special drop for the tour too Amazing, which yes. leads into, so you have a Greek summer tour yes. here in the U.S. and yeah. in Canada. Yes. Before we even talk about that, so you've performed internationally. Let's just talk about your international footprint. Yeah. Like how, how many different countries have you? Um, last year I toured Australia, which was really cool. Wow. We did three cities. We did Perth, Sydney, and Melbourne. Okay. I've done... Uh, Mel Melbourne must have been insane. It was insane. Yeah. It was really... 700,000 Greeks there. Yeah, it was crazy. Melbourne was crazy. Sydney was nuts though too. Sydney, we played the Ivy, which was like oh, okay. which a huge club yes. there. It was wild. No I was way. like, wow, I got to come back to Australia. <laughs> this and, is great. And you were headlining these tours? Yes. And were you? did you have local talent there opening up for you? Yeah. So okay. it was these uh, promoters out there, they're called Olympus. They reached out about having me come and be like the headline performer at their event. Amazing. And so we did these events, but they were like, like the, especially the show that they did in Sydney was kind of like at FDF where they had the cameras and like the screens. And I didn't even realize there were going to be screens until I turned around and was like doing my thing. And then I saw the screen behind me. I was like, oh, that's me right That's now. Me, right, <laughs> like, right. And so, then you stopped the show. It was like, so Whoa. funny. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, you know, it was really cool. It was just, uh, that was, that was my first time doing a show like as a headliner uh, with that big of a production, which right. was really cool. Um, That's so, a big yeah, deal was, getting out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really cool. And to get to go to Australia this early in my career was really a lot of artists. It's just far. Yeah. It's far. So it worked out for me to go there, which was really cool. Amazing. We played uh, South Africa. I did with Argyros. Where did you do? Where, we uh, did uh, Cape Town? Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Wow. In October. Done Cyprus, Greece. Uh, done all over the U.S. And, and Canada. Yeah. Don't forget my Canada. Eh? Where else? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, where else have I done? That's pretty London. I'm okay. Did the U.K.? Germany? Have you done Germany yet? I've done a showcase in Germany. Okay. I haven't done like an open show yet there, but I'm looking forward to it. That's pretty amazing. So now this tour, how does this, this is your baby. This it's the Greek baby. summer tour. Yeah. You're performing in a dozen. I had the list here, but my daughter yeah. took yeah, your autograph, took the autograph and left. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing 12 shows and it's called, it's called feels like Greek summer because it's not quite Greek summer yet. But we're pre-gaming. We're yes. getting ready to go to Greece. <laughs> um, and basically, I'm kind of building this experience. I want people to come to the show to feel this like, if you have been, to, have you, you've been to Greece in the summer. I'm there four times You're a year. You're there four <laughs> times a year, right? Yeah. So Greece in the summer, there's nothing quite like it. It's just so like free and everybody just wants to have a good time yeah. and like party and the energy is like through the roof um, and just... It's beautiful. It's just, it's just this can't energy. You can't explain it yeah. unless you're there. Yeah. So we're going to do our best to make it feel like Greek summer. Amazing. So it's going to be, you're going to, when you come to the show, it's going to be an experience where it feels like Greek summer and I'm going to bring you into my world. That's amazing. And so have you been involved in masterminding this? So you're working with a promotion company and, and yeah, my booking agent, yeah. promotion company. Um, and 
now like my choreographer and dancers, the designers that are going to make the outfits, um, what kinds of experiences we might have for the fans. Like we're working on getting a, like a, a I'm not positive this is going to be the color, but most likely like a blue carpet and create like a red, like a red carpet Love type it. experience for the fans to have when Love they it. come, like have people dress up. Like we might make it like dress up for Greek summer. So like in their like white linen and everything. Guys just show up, Guys shirts show off and they're, yeah, that's yeah. fine. And whatever, their speedos. Yeah, whatever, just show up. So it's going to be like, um, more than just like coming for the show. Like you're coming for the experience and the energy. That's, that's incredible. And are you going to be able to sell like your shirts and stuff there mm -hmm. as well? Okay. Cause I know yes. we were looking <laughs> online kids. too. Yeah. We're like, All right. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have, uh, I'm going to definitely have t-shirts and merch on sale and we're going to have a special Leah drop for the rings. Amazing. It'll only be available on the tour. So there'll be uh, a lot of special special perks for everybody Amazing. that comes out. Yeah. And let me ask you, do you find local talent to open for you? Mm -hmm. Because there's one, so I'm from Toronto, so I'm excited for Toronto. I, I hope you guys have a great showing there because it's thank you. It's just a great Thank city. you. Just, just call your family. How many people are in your family? Oh, 122 between Perfect. close. Uh, All right, we're sold out. What's it's the easy. venue in just Toronto? Tell um, it's called the Dance Cave, I think. I'm, I'm not familiar. It's like Maybe two they... or three hundred. Okay. So yeah. halfway there. It should be line up out the door. Halfway there. Uh, halfway good. there. Exactly. <laughs> we got your whole family. We're done. We're Toronto. Good. <laughs> we're going to get everyone out. So when you work, like, who do you find? So I know Seattle. We have a, a local family friend here, Nasi, who's going to open or he's going to perform there as well. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just cool that you're giving these younger, younger artists who have yeah. basically no, I'm, I'm not going to say no presence, but they're local but you're giving right. them a platform now to see that. Like, that's just awesome. Like Thanks. how much are you involved in even? Um, I'm involved in like the asking around process and I, I, I didn't know Nasi before, but I did meet him um, after the Arido show in at the Dolby yep. here in LA. I met him and his mom and they were so sweet. Yeah, Nina, and shout out. She's yeah, awesome. She's yeah. awesome. She's a good manager for him. She's, yeah, she's a mom manager. She's, uh, she, she yeah. got him on the show. Um, <laughs> she got him on the show, but like, but he deserves it. Yep. Um, but you know, they sent me, uh, they sent me and my team like some footage of him performing and some of his music and he's great. He's great. He's great. And he's, he's actually local. working on a, uh, yeah. the show intro for this podcast. He's oh, working on a little hook for Amazing, it. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, he's he's just, he's a great kid. I love Nina and it's just, I want people with good energy and a good vibe. Um, and especially if they're local and then their local people come out and it's just everybody wins. Absolutely. Everybody wins. So I'm definitely going to try and have some local talent in each city. That's amazing. So, yeah. So part of this, and I know you've been amazing with your time and I thank you. Uh, I want a couple more things and then I'm going to bring my two daughters that skip school to come meet you today. Oh, and they're going to, right. That. They're going to come ask you a few questions. It's going to be odd. They're so excited. Oh, they're your little, uh, oh, interns, the interns, but my eight year old was like, she touched my hand in the crowd. I'm like, she's coming. So uh, let's talk about advice. Right, you've been given advice through your whole life. You've learned. So, someone that's sitting there today that thinks she did it, I can do it. Right? What advice would you give a young girl or boy listening to this, where it's like, I too want to be a singer, like unfiltered, the real life advice? Like, yeah. what could you share? Um, I would say to do it as much as you can, whenever you can. So even for me, it was just like what I did. Yes, I had my job and that was important to me, but like and all the other hours that I could possibly dedicate to it, I dedicated to it. And then from doing that and like networking as much as possible, definitely nowadays, like social media, like posting your talent and what you, what you want on social media and sharing it, it might not hit the first second or even after the hundredth video, but maybe that 220th video somebody sees it and you know, you just don't know how the universe is going to work. So just really put yourself out there as much as you can and forget about the cringe. Like you just got to do it. Like for me, when I released, um, Fotia, I remember I was kind of bummed with the numbers. And this was when I was like, not in the best headspace, honestly. And I remember being bummed about it. 
But little did I know that like a few months later, Eleni Fureira actually it came up for her on her YouTube. And then months later, she would like ask me to do a duet version of it. And then a full year after it came out, we did a whole new version of it that then brought light, more life into this song that deserved this life. But I didn't know how it was going to happen, you know, like the universe and just the world works in funny ways. And so if you just keep at it and you keep going and you stay diligent, things will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You might not know how, but just that's great. stay determined. That's literally it because it's very easy to give up. Yeah, and I think that's phenomenal advice. And you got nervous at that open mic or whatever, and yeah. you walked out, right? Maybe yeah. you didn't have the right person next to you to say, no, yeah. let's do this. Then you did the band and you cracked. You had a team to help you and like, let's go back and do our own concert, right? Yeah. So you've had that support. I think, you know, a lot of these kids that are sitting there by themselves may not have that support network, but it's good. Like, you should know that you're touching young people like they're seeing this like it's a big deal which also now that i have young daughters how do you balance growing your career and not and and being perceived a certain way while you know you have these young girls like just following you mm -hmm. like is it hard to navigate that or is it you do what you do and do you know you what know, i'm trying to ask? i think i know what you're trying to i think it's it's kind of like you do what you do you have to obviously, you know, be aware, but you also hope that the parents or whatever are also like parenting. Are able, <laughs> are, are parenting, you know what I mean? So like maybe, uh, like, I don't know, like I'm a woman, right? So there's some stuff or some, maybe some content, some songs, uh, like diving, for example, has a curse word. It's not, uh, it's PG 13, you yep. know what I mean? But you know, it's kind of like just because there's kids, um, I think I saw an interview around and said, she's like, I, it's not my job to be the role model. I'm aware. And of course I care about it, but I'm also like my own woman and my own artist. And as an adult, I'm going to do what expresses me mm -hmm. and my art. And, um, you know, there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be critics. There's you gotta always going to be haters. There's always going to be critics. Totally. And I, that was hard to get used to at first, but you just gotta, you just gotta do you because at the end of the day, like... One day I'm going to be old and sitting in a wheelchair. Well, I wish I like didn't do me. Yeah, hundred <laughs> you know I mean? percent. And so, you get one shot at this, right? We, we all get, do. We get one yeah, shot. Yeah, you get one shot. And I'd also want like say like a, a young a young girl singing. She's like, oh, that's an independent woman doing what she wants to do. That's great. Absolutely. You know. And if you're inspiring people along the way, that's amazing. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then so let me ask you, being too accessible. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you're, you're growing, you're trying to, you're trying to stimulate and, and get new fans and followers. Like that's part of the business, of course. but how much is it? Oh, I was nice. And then these people are taking advantage of me or they're overstepping. Like how, how do you balance that? And then what are some for the, for the people listening? What are some things where it's just don't do this, just show respect, right? If you're out with someone, like, just don't do this. The one thing that's hard, well, I, I really, I always appreciate when I meet fans and I want to give as much time as I can. And like, I'm grateful if anybody asks to take a picture, I really try and like do that. Um, what's hard is like when they're like, follow me back <laughs> or something that I would yeah. say, like, just don't do that. Old man. It's yeah, like... just, just don't do that. Like, you know, right. like, like why, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like... Um, but that's kind of like the only thing, but, um, you know, it comes with, it comes with the territory Yep. and it can be exhausting when it's a lot of people or like I, after my shows, like I will go and stand at the merch with me, every possible person that I can, which is a different experience from, uh, you know, we have the VIP experience, which is a limited amount of people. So yes. it's like, there's more time to breathe and to really talk. But then when there's like the line of people could be tired. A lot of ours just go to bed yes. <laughs> and I understand because you're tired after a show. But to me, it really is important to meet every single possible person that I can. Cause I really am very grateful and I'm very appreciative because without them caring and listening and, and coming out, like I can't do what I do. Exactly. And, uh, so I always do my best to, you know, be as accessible in that way as possible um, in person, especially people come to shows, but then it's just about the team around you to like, to protect you. So there's some stuff yes. where it's just like, 
hey, like reach out. I mean, even like with this podcast, right? I was just like, oh, I'm super down, but like hit up my manager about it. Don't Who's make it awesome, happen. awesome, by the way. Eleni is like, Eleni's yeah. awesome, you know? Yeah. And this way that also clears my head from not having to think about totally that type of stuff and the logistics and I can focus on Because you're my creative. Yeah, yeah. You have to do what you have to do. Yeah. That's great advice. And then back to the parenting thing. It's like, even with my daughters, hey, wait in line, right? When we first met you, Dina's like, okay, just have them say, I'm like, girls, wait, she's busy. If she can, great. Like it comes down to parenting. A lot of people just try to not box it, you know, yeah. like people, like they're still people, right? And we're trying to get we're everything we can. We're all just people, people. right? Like, we're all just people. We're just yeah. people just trying to make our way in the world just as much. Absolutely. You know? uh, is there anything, and then social media you touched upon, so that was great. Um, and then one thing I just want to make sure the listeners know, and we touched upon it, you write your own songs. Yes. Like that's a big deal. Like these are hits. You're Thank not just... You someone else is and they're giving you a script and you're just reading you're writing these with yeah yeah i'm super involved in the whole process um so me and jay are constantly are like co-writing everything he's executive producing a close uh produce co-producer that we work with jordan palmer and then a lot of close friends who are doing it's, it's really cool because we've been i've been growing a lot with my peers so where we started a lot of my friends in New York that I was writing with now have all moved to LA and we're all here and they're doing crazy things. Like, um, one of my friends, Jay Bach, who wrote with us for, uh, my song Aphrodite, he just got a Grammy for some music that he wrote. Like kind of a big deal. <laughs> uh, my friends that wrote, um, Bame Bame with me, Lars and Ali. Now they have like one of the biggest Eurovision songs. They wrote snap. Um, and it's just really cool to come up with a crew and to be growing with a crew. And like, they all came to that Yiros concert. My friends, Lars and Ali, they came to Greece and saw no me way. and saw me perform and got to experience this stuff. Yeah. So it's been really cool and special to bring in really talented friends into my world um, and to create together and like grow together. Absolutely. You know, like they were with me that, that, you know, sign on to write like a crazy idea of a, Pame Pame with Buzuki. Like, what is this? You know, they don't know. And we wrote that song in a studio in New York City. And hit it, yeah. And then they got to see it at the Dolby Theater. That's crazy. Years later, you know? It's That's crazy. That's insane. You touched upon, so for us, uh, I want to, like, closing remarks, Eurovision. Mm. I'm sure you get asked this a lot, yes. but I feel like <laughs> you're the perfect candidate, your genre, your style. Like, you could go into your existing catalog and pick five songs probably that you could perform I aspirations <laughs> i would love to okay i would love to um you know growing up between greece and the us i was always in greece in the summers so you Euro the eurovision craziness would always kind of blow over and it wasn't so big here like we didn't really pay attention to your average american or canadian the average does not american know. doesn't really know they're starting to know it's okay. starting especially from the the movie Will Ferrell did. Um, and yes. some of the bands lately, there's been some success, some crossover success from Eurovision. So people are starting to kind of know and pay more attention. But I, I, I only really cared when, um, Elena Paparizou won yes. 2003 or four. I don't really remember, but That's I was right. so proud. I was so proud of that. She won that as a solo, not with Antique. Yeah. Right? She won yes. that as a solo. And so for me, when I first released Bame Bame and really got into stuff with Sony and even in Greece, Eurovision wasn't, I didn't even think about it. Right. But then all the comments on my social media and on these videos and, and my music was like, she needs to go to Eurovision, Eurovision, totally. Eurovision, Eurovision. I was like, interesting. I hadn't thought of that, to be honest. And then I kind of looked into it more and it really was my fans that put it, put the idea in our heads um, and made me really want to do it and then i kind of looked into it more and i was like oh my god this would be so amazing and i would be so proud Are you to go me? and represent our culture on a international stage international. like that it's like a it's political amazing. it's everything it's yeah. amazing it's the craziest contest in the world okay. and um yeah i would i would love to hold to on represent uh, i'm gonna call me like after this and we're gonna pull yeah, some strings here. are you no, kidding let's me let's make it happen you know let's i'm go. ready i'm ready dude you're awesome <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to cover 
before we go because you've been so awesome you're um thanks yeah you're you have great energy i feel like i feel like we covered pretty much everything the tour is big which is great huge um kickoff date is oh yeah kickoff date is may 8th in dallas dallas yeah in dallas we're doing let me see if i can remember it yeah we're hitting dallas chicago toronto montreal boston new york Baltimore, Philadelphia, LA, Phoenix, Arizona, Seattle. 11 cities. Oh, that was, was that I, 11? I must have missed one then. There's 12. Counting wasn't really my thing. Maybe it was 12. There's yeah. 12. It might've been 12, but I think I got most of them. I'm sorry if you're the city that's missing, but uh, he'll <laughs> put a graphic or something. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll put all, all that up. Um, but yeah, so it's my biggest... Uh, stretch of a headlining tour and i'm just so excited to to do it and i'm hoping to see everybody especially that was at fdf that energy oh my god was crazy and <laughs> to say earlier it was so funny because i didn't realize they were going to split the room between 21 and I, under right. 21 and i got out there i was like something's different about <laughs> this side of the room right. <laughs> and the like screaming the kids. screaming yeah. kids and yeah. like the teenagers and stuff uh, i was just like oh and a lot of the shows are all ages um so i'm just really really excited to be able to offer the show to to yeah. all ages and to just have that's like the greek way you go to uh, a panigiri you go to a ledi you got like the kids and the yeah, yeah it's like we're all in every age in between totally and, and they want to sleep you put the three chairs together exactly. and you lay them like, out that's and... just kind of that's what i want Absolutely. so i just want everybody's welcome yeah yeah papu uh the kids like bring them all we're gonna have a good time we're gonna be here in la <laughs> for sure and maybe toronto amazing. that's for sure amazing you're thank awesome you. thank you so much thank for your you. time eh? thank you to wrap up this podcast i have two of my three daughters here to ask if i get yes some questions Dimitra and Viviana Strubulis skipped school today to be here. Got flowers, desserts, wrote notes, especially for Evangelia. So they're very excited to ask questions. So first up, we have Dimitra. Take it away. So my name is Dimitra Strubulis. Nice to meet you. You too. And I was wondering if, what made you want to be a singer? Mm. So I always had this dream of being a singer. You're in third grade, right? Yeah. So there's a picture of me in third grade where it's in the yearbook and everybody got to ch- got to write what they wanted to be when they grow up. And there's this picture of me exactly your age and underneath it says Evangelia Psorakis, Psaraki, singer. And I actually had forgotten about that. I knew I always wanted to, but then um, I rediscovered that photo when a friend of mine found this yearbook and she sent it to me years later when I actually became a singer and I followed through on that dream and she was like third grade Evangelia always knew and um for me singing is just something I've always I've always loved and found so enjoyable and it's really really special that I get to do it now and get to share my music with you yeah um how long do music videos take you to do hmm it depends on the video but they are a lot of work yeah. There's a lot of time preparing for the video. So you have to think of what is actually going to happen and what are the colors going to be and what are the outfits that you're going to wear? Is there going to be choreography? Then you have to learn a whole dance and decide how it's going to be filmed and how many camera angles, what kind of camera, um, how do you want the edit to be? There's so many factors that go into creating a visual like that. So they definitely take time they can be done quickly if you work very fast but the best is having uh at least a month ahead of time to plan and then that way the day you go if you have a strong plan then the day you go to film it everything goes as smoothly as possible and something will always not go according to plan anytime you go to film something (laughs) so you it makes you be the most prepared for for anything and then you got to edit it so then you need like another week or two to make sure the edit's right, and then it's ready to come out. Yeah, and just saying when I was at your concert and you got to touch my hand, it made me feel good. Like, it made me feel happy. I'm so happy to hear that. That means a lot to me. I can't wait to do that again and again. Yeah. You're going to come on tour, right? (laughs) Yeah. And last thing is that you're way better than Taylor Swift and all those other singers. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate the sentiment. 
I will take it, but they're amazing also. And they're, they're, everybody's just different and good in yeah. their own way. But I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. And next up, we have Viviana Strubuli asking her special questions for Evangelia. My name is Viviana Strubuli. It's so nice to meet you. I'm Evangelia. Are you nervous when you get on stage? So, I like to call, I like to change the word from nervous to excitement. Because yes, I do feel, ner I, I feel this like tingling sensation, but it's not that I'm scared to go on stage, it's that I'm excited to go on stage and I'm anticipating it. So, yes. Do you have fun when you're on stage? I have so much fun when I'm on stage. What's your favorite song that you sing? My favorite song, that's a difficult question, but I would say my favorite one is Fotia. I love saying Fotia Nesta Matia Su. Do you like um, filming the songs? Do I like filming the songs? Yeah. Making music videos? Yeah. I love making music videos. Making music videos is one of my, and visuals in general, is one of my favorite parts of this job because it's not just what you hear, it's also what you see. And I get to be creative and play dress up and pick out outfits and learn dances. I love to make videos. Viviana, good. What do we want to say to Vagilia? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great job. She had those questions memorized and ready to go. Thanks for listening to this episode of Invigorate Your Business with George Strombolis. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons and follow me on all the main podcast streaming channels. Also, please share your comments when you can. I appreciate your help in expanding this network to a worldwide audience. Until next time, stay invigorated.